welcome to the Pride Night Gun Podcast. I am your host, Nuts Joe. And over the next few weeks, myself and JJ will bring you this exciting new feature where we will deliver fresh and exciting content from fun reactions and opinions, game analysis to the latest news from the Magpie world, and of course, our website, prideofnightingham.co.uk. Hello and welcome to the Pride Night Podcast, episode 20. I'm your host, Nats Joe, and as always, your favourite co-host, Joe Jones, joins me. Hello everybody, JJ here. I hope you've all had a good Christmas and a happy new year. In today's episode, we'll talk about the sacking of Ricardo Maniz and the new appointment of uh, Jamie Fullerton. Also, we'll talk about the Jimmy and Jack Statue Fund finally reaching the fundraising target, and also the latest transfer talk around Meadow Lane and plenty more, so stay tuned and welcome to the show. So it's finally been confirmed that County have appointed a new first team manager from Longham Forest and Bourne Wanderers youth team coach Jamie Fullerton has taken the reins at Meadow Lane. He took charge of the first team on Monday and his first game will be away at Crawley Town this Saturday. A midfielder by trade in his playing days, Fullerton began his footballing career at Scottish club St Mirren and he spent five years there, racking up 143 appearances before going to France and uh, enjoying a spell with SC Bastia. In 1997 he moved to Crystal Palace where he played 77 times and Following his short load at Bolton, he moved back to Scotland with Dundee United. After that, he went to Brentford and he finally wound down his career with Southend United, Chesterfield and Singaporean club Woodlands Wellington. Now, following his retirement, he moved to Spain and he set up his own football academy there, running teams from under 8 to under 19. And in July 2011, he took over his youth team coach at Bristol Rovers. A year later, he then became the coach of the Bolton Wanderers on the 21s before being released by mutual consent in October 2014. After that, he became became the academy manager at Nottingham Forest before finding himself a Medellin. Well, for me, I'm surprised that the club haven't gone for somebody with experience. I mean, I think that's what everyone would have hoped for. I mean, personally, myself, that's what I saw as needing. The requirement is the minimum of having somebody who knows League 2, you know, so that we can go up. You know, it, it's been said that, um, you know, Ray mentioned that we wouldn't be taking somebody with inexperience. And I'm a bit disappointed that he's opted for somebody, you know, who's got no managerial experience apart from what he has at uh, under-21 level. And that doesn't really transpire into the first team game because it's a lot slower and it's a lot more development based. But, you know, I, I just hope that he, he turns out to be a uh, a good decision. And I, I really just and on heart hope that he is somebody who will galvanise the fan base again because we do lack that. And if we can potentially just see at the end of the season next year, we might be able to rebuild. You know, again, I would have said that personally, my hopes would have been with somebody with a bit more uh, knowledge of managerial basis and but then that could come from his uh, assistant manager and hopefully you know he won't be let down by that person that person will be able to mentor him and, and take him and us further um towards getting promotion again uh, can i ask you something chris uh, what league are Notts county in right now league two do you really think league two is uh, the place to be really taking gambles like this hiring a uh, manager who's got no managerial experience of an English first team or a first team full stop. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm personally very disappointed in this appointment only because uh, if you have a look at the last few appointments that we've made, so Chris Kiwamia, who was a reserve team coach at Notts, he was then promoted to first team manager, had no experience. We then went for Sean Derry, he was a player and we just plucked him from there and gave him a manager's job. And he did all right, fair enough. But then once there was pressure in terms of, you know, potentially getting relegated, you know, he didn't have that experience and, you know, the the knowledge to really handle that, you know, being in that situation. After that, we then went for Ricardo Meniz. Okay, he has managed in other countries, but you're talking things like the Austrian League, the Hungarian League, different kettles of fish to the English fourth division, uh, and that didn't go very well at all. You'd think with Notts being in the lower half of the table in League Two, that we should really be going for someone who's got a bit more experience and knows the leagues inside out, and is actually confident that he'd be able to that he'd be able to get us out of this league because you know he's got experience in managing teams but once again we've opted for a complete rookie 
someone who has never managed first team before and you know disappointment is not reassuring at all all the fans predictably have gone mental on uh, on social media they're expressing their dismay they're saying it's an illogical appointment and to be fair I, I have to agree with them I, I must say I really do hope that I will eat my words in a couple of weeks a couple of months time and that it does turn out to be a duel kind of like Eddie Howe with Bournemouth but over the last couple of years we've had these gambles with these unproven managers these shots in the dark and it's gotten us nowhere so you know forgive me for not having much faith at the minute but best of luck well to answer your question I, I, I do think it's a gamble you know in League 2 you need somebody who knows the division because if you don't you know you, you're risking you know relegation into the conference and if we get relegated then we lose the oldest professional league team which is something that we need to keep hold of um but then again, I generally don't believe that we'll be relegated this season. So like, it's not in my mind. I think that, you know, for now we can see what, you know, Jamie's all about and potentially I hope that he manages to stay around and that he, he does well enough to want to, to remain. And we don't know how long the contract is. So, you know, it could just be a temporary thing. It could be a year, you know, it could be longer. But we just need to um, settle down and just really try and get behind the squad because, you know, I'm disappointed just as much as you when I heard the news and I, I were bombarded with messages on, on social media, you know, not just my personal page, but uh, um, the PON page as well and via the website. You know, I've got quite a few uh, personal messages and, you know, I can, I can feel it now. I'm disappointed, but I'm, I can't just turn my back on it and say that it's a terrible decision because he's got no experience because we haven't seen what he, what he can do, you know, and he must have had something about him to be able to be um, the under-21 coach in Ireland Forest. So, and I just hope that he can learn at not. So I hope his assistant is somebody that's going to help him to go forward. Well, Moniz was the skills coach at Tottenham Hotspur, which is a Premier League club and one that's doing quite well. So with that, when he was appointed, we all thought, oh, OK, you know, this could be interesting. But as it turned out, the experiment was a complete failure. Um, so, you know, I would much rather have someone like Paul Hurst, who has proven himself at conference level with as he has with Grimsby because he can then use that experience to provide results and do the business uh, you know, in the next league up. I mean, I saw one comment on Facebook which talked about Neil Warnock about how he was an unknown quantity when he came to Notts, but he had managed Scarborough and they'd won the conference title uh, a year or two before coming to Notts. So that essentially what it's like with Paul Hurst who he took Grimsby to the conference playoff final um, and he ran Bristol Rovers quite near, but this manager is kind of you know he is completely unproven as was Kawamia as was Derry so I all I can say is like, like I said before I do hope I eat my words and that he does well but you know best of luck and for some fantastic news from the Jim and Jack Statue Fund in the pub to club walk which was taken place on Sunday they had managed to raise a total of £633 which means that the Jim and Jack Statue Fund has reached its target well done to everyone involved it's been a brilliant effort and now on to the installation Jim and Jack are coming home folks yeah, some absolutely fantastic news there that I'm sure everyone can uh, be happy about there. The fact that Jimmy and Jack, you know, our best manager and assistant manager in our history, will finally be coming home at Meadow Lane and it will just be a reminder, you know, much like um, Brian Clough in Market Square, you know, the you know manager that has excelled at his club, it will be the same with Meadow Lane, you know, to have... Jimmy Cyril and Jack Wheeler there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be so happy to, to see them there and hopefully it will spur the uh, the players and the fans to, you know, sing extra loud, um, you know, in terms of bringing back the good old days. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. And um, I, I mean, I've, I mean, there's a message on Facebook with Andy Black saying that it will be coming around about April time, so towards the end of this season, uh, that the actual statue will be installed. So, yeah, that, that'll be great. And then we can then take that into next season and yeah hello i'm colin slater and you're listening to the pride of nottingham podcast the transfer window is now open and there are plenty of transfer rumors flying around the lane none more so surrounding liam noble who is attracting interest from Portsmouth and Cambridge United. Also, Alan Smith is attracting interest from Plymouth and there is rumours regarding him having travelled down there and his photographs to prove this. And also, Blair Adams is attracting interest from Adam Murray, who's with Mansfield Town. 
Yeah, so um, some interesting transfer stories there. I mean, with Liam Noble, we all know that he's an absolutely fantastic player. On his day, he's virtually unstoppable. Um, but he's got two sides to his game, hasn't he? So on one side, he's absolutely brilliant. And then the other side, he can just flip and get himself sent off. And usually it's things like on the ball incidents or violent conduct, that kind of thing. And then he finds himself suspended. Um, his contract runs out at the end of, uh, the season so really it's a case of which way do you go do you sell him now and see if you can make some money from him or do you hang on to him till the end of the season let him go on a free or do you offer him a new contract um Personally, I mean, I've I've had several views over the last sort of couple of days since the rumours have come up in terms of you know how do you handle a player like Noble, but I've uh, I've come to a conclusion now that I would offer him a contract because the the pros outweigh the cons by far. I mean, probably have him in my starting eleven and scoring pretty much a goal a game, and even if he then becomes unavailable for a couple of games, you know he, that would be much better than just to not have him and to be drawing and losing and not getting any points at all whereas with him we are not quite guaranteed but we are much more likely to, to get wins so yeah definitely be interested in keeping Liam Noble and I hope the club makes him a really good offer uh, to thwart Portsmouth and Cambridge um, now as for Alan Smith he's in his mid-30s now and He's been a bit indifferent of late in terms of his performances. And he has been a good servant to the club. But with him staying, he'd be one player that, you know, if he decides to move on, then good luck to him. And as for Blair Adams, Mansfield want him. He's been on loan there. Uh, Adam Murray's sung his praises and he wants him there permanently. But I think we should keep hold of Blair Adams because he is a cracking player. And, you know, he's got... And he's a hot prospect for the future as well. So... Yeah, that's my personal assessment. Keep Noble, keep Adams, sell Smith. Well, personally for me, I'm, I'll start with the rumour that first started and um, Blair Adams at Mansfield. I'd personally let him go. I mean, he hasn't really done anything for an arts in, in League One. He looked a much better player in League Two. You know, he, I could see why we loaned him out. He just didn't look um, useful. Much better going forward, but then he loses the ball and defensively he doesn't seem to offer much. And I just think Mansfield have managed to get that player out of him that we haven't quite managed to do. And I'm not one of these people who think that we should just spoil um, Mansfield and just hold him out. You know, I think we should, you know, off off cut it, get the wages back and find someone else who, who can fill them shoes because I'm sure they can. Um, Alan Smith, I, I think he's going to be a fantastic coach and that's one thing that I'd, I'd like to see Nuts try and do, try and talk him more into being a rotational player that doesn't play every other game, maybe one in three, one in four, um, that will take more of a coaching role to bring these players through like Curtis Thompson, you know, because he is doing ever so well but I think he needs a mentor, somebody who knows the game, somebody somebody who can help him score goals, somebody who can help him pass. Because for me, he's going to be an engine for Knotts. And if we can hold on to Curtis Thompson, for example, I think that that'll be massive. But we really need people like Alan Smith around that can um, mentor players. But if, if if he's enthusiastic on playing still, I, I'd i let him go. I, I'd say that, you know, Plymouth for uh, your team, because at the end of the day, I, I don't think we can afford to, um, you know, give him the shirt for to start for, to be a starting 11 player. I just, I don't see it. Liam Noble for me, he's hot headed, but he's a driving force for Knotts and you know he can score goals he can lift us up in games where we look totally out of it he can change them um, this season he's looked a completely different player and he's turned it around and I don't know what happened at uh, you know what caused the suspension I mean I watched the highlights and it looked like their player had made a meal of it but um, I think teams are starting to, to pick up on this it's slightly opposite of for Israel McLeod you know it goes down far too easy, you know. But referees know that he's going to dive and or go down easily, so they're not swayed by the decision and they'll just give a free kick to the opposition. And I think that teams are now noticing that Liam Noble is a potential player to get sent off and he just needs help, he needs support around him and he needs the captain to... You know, to tell him to to focus on his feet rather than his mouth or his arms or his hands. Would you consider making Liam Noble captain? Well, I think that in the future he'd potentially be a, a good uh, a good choice. But right now, I think he's too too hot headed. You know, it could potentially calm him down, like it did originally for Roy Carroll. But 
I just get the feeling potentially we have better people on the field that, uh, you know, like John Stead, that could be a captain. Um, might not be a popular choice, but I, I, I do believe that. I wouldn't go down the route of giving it to somebody who's, um, you know, young like Aidan Ollis because he had his chance and I, I just think that was too much burden for him. I think that's where his form went. But I, I definitely think in the future Liam Nable could potentially be an uh, Notts County captain if he, he manages to, to stay around and if we offer him a contract. Now for some transfer news regarding one of our ex-players. Our former goalkeeper Fabian Spies has joined Boston United. Now he played nine times for the Magpies. He's also been on loan to Corby Town, Lewes and Bristol Rovers. He was let go by Moniz in the summer and he's played 18 times for Torquay United. He also played for Alfreton Town and now he's moved on to the Pilgrims. He could be playing... Curzon Ashton on Saturday, so a bit of a change from uh, when he was playing in the League One as a substitute for Bartosz Bielkowski, but uh, hey-ho. Yeah, I think it's a shame for him. I mean, for me, I, I think that he lost his confidence, you know, during the preseason. Um, but I also feel that, in a way, that Nuts County didn't push him enough because I, I don't believe that the loan options was suffice for bringing a talented goalkeeper like him through the system, you know, and I I just felt that we was hanging around under um, Bartos that uh, we had a, a goalkeeper of uh, Fabian's uh, ability there but he just seemed to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle until the point of where I could see why we released him because he hasn't quite reached that potential you know he had a trial with Liverpool but you know I, I couldn't see that see them taking him on I mean he's a fantastic goalkeeper and I think he should be playing in League 2 and I do think that great things will come from him if he can find that confidence but he really firstly needs to find a team where he can just enjoy some football, settle down and keep some clean sheets because as soon as he starts doing that, he'll move back up the league and I have no doubt about that, you know, and potentially may end up back in Germany. Now, as part of the podcast show, one thing we like to do is to go on the forum and on our social media pages and look at what our fans and our followers have uh, been saying. So in one of the topics that we've been talking about this week, we're looking at our top five favourite ex Notts County players. Now, Liam Pye names his five who are Alan Judge, Gary Lidl, Bartosz Bielkowski, Ben Davies and Neil Bishop. Now, his reasons are for Judge, just a great player who has a knack for scoring brilliant goals. Lidl, steady and reliable. Bartos, brilliant goalkeeper. Davies, set pieces and general skill always amaze me. And Bishop, just a very solid midfielder who made working hard seem very natural. Yeah, and I'd like to name mine. I'd, I'd first start in no particular order with Phil Turner. Just an iconic player from my childhood. I always remember him being a driving force behind Notts County. And in the, them, them days, he was the captain, he was the person that you really looked at to inspire Knots into um, achieving and winning games and yeah he was just a fantastic player to watch as a youngster I also mention Alan Judge because I've always watched him from his youth days when he was back at Blackburn and even back then you know my brother's uh, off Rover fan and uh, you know he knows what kind of ability that he would have brought to Notts County and I didn't think that originally we would have been able to sign him and when we signed him it was a, a fantastic player to bring in and um, yeah he had a habit of scoring decent goals but not just that he was a, another driving force somebody else who was very creative in getting play forward for Notts and I would name Lee Hughes because we're not going to have a striker like him for some time you know he scored goals and he got the cop absolutely buzzing and you know a lot of Notts fans fondly remember those times where he could just turn something out of you know nothing into something so special that you just really had to embrace his talent and skill you know not many players could have been able to continue to do that and he did it ever so well you know Gary Liddell for me, he was a great signing for us back when we was making a push, you know, to get back up towards the playoffs. And um, he was he was steady, you know, he was a bit like Mike Edwards, but able to play in midfield as well. And just calm, cool, reliable and composed, you know, he never seemed to be out of uh, sorts in, in midfield. And when he, we pushed him into defence, you know, he allowed us to go forward and he, he broke down play ever so well. And he was good, such a good player for Knots. And I also say Bartosz Bukowski because, you know, um, we have been lucky over recent years to have some brilliant keepers, but Bartosz made some breathtaking saves. And I also fondly remember going into the cup and how often he would frequently come over just to say hello to my son, who would always sing 
Bartosz Pilkowski's Poland, Poland number one. And, you know, he just embraced the fans and he was just a fantastic player for for being right behind the community and right behind the fans and acknowledging that there was people out there that contributed from behind the scenes. Now, I'll go through a couple more and at the end I'll uh, name my own. So, Rivellino says... Lee Hughes, a proper centre forward, always looking to get a goal or create an opportunity. Alan George, good to watch, skillful in midfield and scored some great goals. Alan Sheehan, hopefully he'll be back, I assume permanently. Neil Bishop, no nonsense midfielder and for that goal against Manchester City in the FA Cup. And Callum McGregor, a young player who made a big impact. Now, Tony Hately, now with a name like that, um, you would assume that his namesake uh, would be up there. And in fact, it's his number one. A great header of the ball. Started his career with not, scored a lot of goals and helped us to win the 4th Division Championship when Sir Jimmy brought him back. Don Masson, the king, a master midfielder player who could put his foot on the ball and make an intelligent pass. Lee Hughes, happy memories of him scoring some fantastic goals during the Munto era. He always gave 100%. Brian Stubbs, a no-nonsense centre-back. How we could do with the likes of Stubbsy now. And a toss-up between two goalkeepers, George Smith from the 60s, or more recently Kasper Schmeichel. On balance, he says, I have to give it to Kasper. It was a privilege to see a goalkeeper of his class at Meadow Lane. Now I'll mention my own players. Some of them have uh, been mentioned already. So Alan Judge and Lee Hughes, they've, uh, you know, as, as mentioned before, they've been absolutely fantastic servants of the club. Now my goalkeeper of choice would be Kasper because, I mean, he, was, he broke records when he was with us and... And the fact that he's now a goalkeeper for a team that is in the shout of winning the Premier League, you know, just five, six years on, you know, just shows just how good he is. I mean, you know, he could potentially go on to equal his father's achievements um, if, if he keeps up the good work as he's been doing. In terms of strikers, um, I'd say Mark Stallard. You know, he's a personal legend of mine, absolutely fantastic goal scorer. You know, when I was like, you know, an early teenager, he was the one I looked up to. He was just on the ball all the time you know metaphorically and physically and I had the pleasure of uh, interviewing him a few times as well and it was just brilliant because it's like oh here's my idol now my final contribution to my top five players um, hasn't been mentioned yet and it's a bit of a poignant one um, it's Richard Butcher who very sadly passed away a couple of years ago in uh, 2011 it's uh, it's five years now uh, only this weekend just gone that he tragically died and it was such a sad sad day um he was one of my favorite players because he he was a shining light in terms of when the club was going through a very very dark period and you know we're talking relegation from the football league you know surviving on the final day you know playing some teams that are now you know they're either gone completely bankrupt you know like your Chester cities or you know they're they're languishing in the in the non-league and them um, and it really could have been us but Butcher was there you know he was one of the very few brilliant players I mean he was just waning with goals from midfield time and time again he was just such a hard worker you know he was he was the kind of player that really we could be doing with now you know someone who's kind of suited to you know sort of league one league two you know hard working knows the leagues inside out and you know just gives 100 percent. you know the, he was he was fantastic and you know it's you know i can't believe that he's passed away really um but yeah, so so those are my five plays, and like I said, with a special mention for for Butch, rest in peace. And that's all we got time for today. But before I go, I'd just like to thank um, several community members who have uh, kindly donated some money to keeping the upkeep of the Pride Longham website. You know, fans will be well aware that I myself, Notts Joe, um, and Joe Jones work tirelessly to to provide a rich source community site and. Um, just something for Nuts fans to enjoy and we, we put a lot of time and effort into that and you know we do know that people appreciate it but sometimes we just need a little help just to make sure that things are continuing as, the, as they should be we've got some exciting new features lined up and you know we really need to um, you know make sure that we start gaining some some revenue to take the burden off the finances that I'm paying out for myself you know because it could be being spent on my family but you know we are doing something we are passionate 
passionate about and you know my dad helps me as well so you know my dad's a, a great support you know super ram not only does he write but he's right behind anything that i do in today to day life and if we need help he's there so that, that's good but yeah we've had free donations from free members and uh yeah i'd just like to say thank you to liam pie hubler pies and elite pie because your kindness has really meant uh, a lot to me um it's not something that i particularly feel comfortable with asking because i know that some people out there will be like oh asking for money and you're begging it's not the case um i don't expect anyone to donate whatsoever so when somebody does it's uh, uh, an actual naturally a, a pleasant surprise and as i say it just means a great deal just to see somebody out there who, who, who puts a price on on the value of what we're doing and you know we are enjoying it and we are offering it at what is it's free but you know it, it is nice to gain that support and it, it does mean an awful lot to to us because it allows us to continue it allows us to take some burden off us and it just allows us to um, regroup and just continue the quality that we put out because you know that's what Pride Nottingham is all about. Well, I mean, to think that we're now in our third year with Pride Nottingham, so from 2013 and now we're in 2016, and the site's grown so much, and it's absolutely fantastic to see just so many people on uh, on the forum and also on the Facebook page, on the Twitter page that are all chatting and debating and voicing their opinions and you know sharing their stories and photos and so on is great i think you know it's now a proper community but you know that we cannot rest on our laurels you know i if you listen to this show i'd like you to do one thing for me and that's share the podcast tell people about it you know whether it's not county fans or even fans from other east midlands teams or just football fans just let them know at proud nottingham let them know about the podcast and just spread the word you know if that's one thing you know you're going to do sort of this week please do that for us you know because i'm sure that if all of you listen to this can go on and spread the word share it and uh, and so on you know there's going to be more more growth and so on you know we really want to get as many fans on board not just from knots but from other teams as well just make it into one massive footballing community and we can just grow you know you and i and us We'll all just grow together and it'll be fantastic. Well, thank you for listening to the Proud Nottingham podcast. I've been JJ. I'm not Joe. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your week and Godspeed. Hey.